beautiful people welcome back to my channel i am Paige. this is seeking alexandria and guys <laughs> i'm a little nervous for today's video um we're gonna have a conversation we're just gonna aerate the topic let's talk about it um as you saw by the title today we're gonna be talking about things that annoy me in the realm of the beauty world beauty community makeup what have you and uh, i just have a light little list just to get us started and actually there are little bits and pieces of this that you will have already heard in my most recent purchaser pass which i will link up here um because in that video i kind of ended up going off a little bit a lot of it on a couple of topics and I wasn't sure how you guys would take it because typically I'm just gonna be honest that's not really my cup of tea I'm not a commentary channel I'm not a drama channel I'm very much so just like a review have a nice light positive attitude I'll talk about makeup I love and makeup I don't love I did a full face of bad makeup which if you have not seen it I'm gonna link it and if you listen to nothing else I say you need to watch that video because it is hilarious I look like tinfoil by the end of the video seriously you need to go watch it but anyways while I was doing this purchaser pass video and all of this was just kind of flooding out of me I got really nervous and very apprehensive that you guys either might not like that side of me or that some of you don't come here for that and I think that that's fair for every video you know you put out some people don't like eyeshadow some people don't like new foundations it's just kind of the way it works well about halfway through that video I actually joked and said oh if anybody wants to see a full video on things that annoy me you know I'll do it and I was actually shocked at the number of people that were like um excuse me yes please me right here and uh, yeah so that's kind of where this video comes from and obviously before we get into this I do want to just say a little disclaimer and I'm not one for disclaimers like my opinion is my opinion but at the same time I want you guys to know going into this I am still the same like nice light-hearted you know I'm not a drama filled I'm not a negative filled kind of person this isn't going to be a 15 to 20 minute video on like negativity and hate and that sort of thing because that's just not who I am but let's go ahead and just kick this list off with something I did touch on a little bit in that video something that we're already slightly acquainted with because we're just gonna like you know we're gonna snuggle our way into this conversation and that is with brands that freaking take forever to ship I I look at my little Hulk arms. There's like, like I'm already starting to get there. I do not understand this to me. When you are a brand and you take forever to ship, I think the worst things about you. Okay. Because first of all, first of all, as a human being, you know, that feeling of like, Hey, I ordered X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter what it is. Honey, I do not care if you are ordering Tostitos. I don't care if you're ordering makeup. I don't care if I'm ordering a Diet Coke or if I Postmates a, a pair of headphones. Okay. Whatever it is that you buy, that you order, there is such an anticipation, right? You start to feel in your soul in your being in your existence. You're like, Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. And as you wait for that product to get there, that little who inside of you just builds and builds and builds because there's nothing more satisfying than after you've paid for it, it shows up in a day or two or three or 12 if you're color pop and you just sit there and you're like wow I have been so excited like there is some anticipation there and for me I'm like first of all as a brand as whoever is in charge of that shipping department have you never felt that have you never been the person that's waiting for a package but it's just freaking cruel color pop like I'm not even trying to be mean I'm not trying to sugarcoat nothing over here but like the fact that you could do that to my little heart and soul to anybody's heart and soul is painful for me another brand that did something like this to me that really pissed me off i'm sorry i know everybody's talked about it but the house of labs lady gaga brand that took the pre-order like i don't know six months in advance it was it was really three but seriously like what i have never heard of a brand the only time that you see a brand or a person or an entity doing this is if it's like a kickstarter campaign and i'm sorry gaga ain't no kickstarter honey she don't need that in her life why in the world why like i understand a pre-order or even like a like a pre something just so that way everyone is guaranteed their product that i would have a lot of respect for but three months honey you are hear me Lady Gaga, you do not need, you do not need, who, you don't need a pre-order. You do not, you can afford to put out just like a little coin into the realm here so that way you can just have a lot of stock. Like there is no reason, you should have just had a record like shit ton of product first of all. I'm sorry, there should have been so much product, so much product in your warehouses because you know, like first of all, I'm sorry, let me reiterate, you are Lady Gaga and you know that you're popular you know that half the people if not all the people in the makeup community freaking just stan you because you're creative and you've been groundbreaking on so many levels and la la. i'm not a huge gaga fan but like i respect the work i respect the portfolio but like you know all of these things so how could you not just say like i you know i'm like a multi-bajillionaire so i'm just gonna like stock some warehouses because i know it's gonna sell and we're good let me just reiterate you are not a risk like there is nothing about this situation that is a risk you are not going to flop even if the 
only people that buy your stuff is on launch and then everybody that buys that first round comes to YouTube, reviews it, and they all say it sucks, you are still going to sell a whole crap ton of product. Not to mention all the stuff you give to influencers for free, which we're not going to talk about. I have that for later. But for me, I'm just like, there is literally no reason if you are Lady Gaga um, and you are having this gigantic launch three months three months is ridiculous and that for me falls right under the heading of take so long to ship because it did so there's that and not only does it take forever to ship but this is exactly what happened i have a ton of you guys that were still waiting for my review and all of my stuff finally got here because i did the pre-order through amazon because to me i'm like well this makes more sense i'll get the two-day shipping i'm a prime member we're good to go oh no somehow my pre-order through amazon got all screwed up i heard that there were people whose pre-orders through her her website the house labs website i heard that some of those got messed up and I'm like this is why this doesn't work if you have product you just have X amount of product I don't care if you buy a little or a lot granted you should buy a lot because you know it's gonna be popular so say you've got all this product you have X amount of product when it is sold it is sold now to me if you're taking pre-orders I'm thinking to myself you should have no reason there should already be a little baggie in your back room that has pages name written on it and it's ready to go there should be these all of these should be ready to go you should have buckets and tubs of people's stuff ready to ship on that day already out Allocated. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that if you are going to launch it and it's going to take forever, I expect it to arrive to me, first of all, perfectly. I want everything to be perfect. The inside, the bubble wrap, the friggin' packaging, nothing should be dried out. Everything should just be absolutely pristine because at this point you have had it long enough to like, I don't know, pet it, like lay down with it, like have a nice little, make it like a bed for it, like make it a meal, make it nice and comfy, put it in the box and like tell it a bedtime story before you shut that lid and close it up. Like you've had it so long, you've mothered it at this point. You didn't package it, honey. You actually laid the golden egg and I want it to be presented to me as such. And I'm just sitting here and I'm like, how is this even possible? Then let's just talk about ColourPop and how they, and again, I'm not attacking ColourPop. I know it sounds like I am, but I probably promise I'm not. They are just the ones that like, they do this more so than literally any brand I've ever seen. They sit there, they take forever to ship. And then at the same time, and by the way, I'm a big ColourPop fan. Love them so much. Will, <laughs> will I ever be on their PR list after this? Probably not, but I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan. But they sit there and they do all of this stuff. And then they offer like the $6 coupon to their consumers. Like, sorry, we didn't know it was going to be such a big launch. What in the actual hell did you just say to me? You didn't know this was going to be, are you even kidding me right now? Whew, that just like gets me going on all kinds of ways because there were a lot of people, not so much myself, but even a lot of you guys that commented and said, I felt really insulted because they feel like they can just sit there and say, oh, here's a coupon for next time. Sorry, here's a coupon. Because there is a level of lackadaisical to it. There's a level of um, almost dismissiveness that when they send those emails out that they do have to their customers. And there have been several times that I've reached out to ColourPop like, hey, I remember one year I bought my niece a little, um, uh, my little pony collection for Christmas. She wanted to like play around with it whatever and a couple of the things showed up dry like they were just dry nasty little shadow pots and they had like shrank down inside of the thing that's how dried out they were and moral of the story it took them so long to get it to me that it was like literally the week before Christmas and I was like hey guys I need you to reship this like this one's garbage and they sent me back an email instead of saying like oh hey we're really sorry we'll get right on that they basically told me hey not gonna happen here's a coupon sorry about your luck and I was like what? Like, that is just so dismissive to me. I just, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the dismissiveness. I don't know if it's, like, something inside of me. You guys can tell me if you ever feel that kind of situation, but, like, it really irritates me. And that's gonna segue me into my next thing, which didn't even make my list, and that is when brands can't, ooh, when brands cannot seem to get product that consumers order. Like, we pay for it. We pay for it! And they can't seem to get us our stuff on time. But I tell you what, those influencers, they have all of their packages. And this is coming from someone that would love to be an influencer, okay? Someone that would love to grow up and, like, have a following and da 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 And it's nothing against the people that receive the packages. It's not their fault. I just do not understand from a business perspective, how does that make sense? Like, yes, send them their packages. Get that press. Absolutely. I have nothing against that. But, like, make sure that if you are going to do that and you are going to take such good care of people that are not paying for your product in any way, shape, or form, you should also be taking care of like I don't know the people that do like there is there it does you no good to say hey talk about my product talk about my product to these 100 influencers over here if you are not going to readily supply the people that are going to purchase it like as a consumer why in the hell would I buy from you if you're not gonna you know take care of me equally you know what I mean like there's just a huge 
thing there that does not make sense to me. Like, it, it literally blows my mind. And here's another thing about PR that drives me absolutely crazy. It's on my list, and I'm just like, oh my god. And I know that we'll see a lot of, like, larger influencers talk about this as well, so I'm not going to drone on too much. But the freaking extravagance that they will go through with that packaging... Oh my god, how is that even necessary? How is it necessary to send, what was it, Tarte just did like a friggin' cupcake pinata? I, I love Tarte, okay, whatever, like they've got some good products, but a cupcake pinata? Why? In what world are you sending? This is not a fifth grader. These are influencers. Like, I just, these, there are so many of these freaking overwhelming packages that to me are just not even close to necessary. I do not get it. I do not understand in this world of waste and landfills and recycling, why are we sending this? And again, I know a lot of influencers talk on it and it can be really disheartening as like either a consumer, a small influencer, you look at them and you're like, don't complain. But that's not even complaining. That's just, I'm sorry, that's just fact. That's, there is no need to do this. And the fact that not only the packaging is so excessive, but the gifts that go with it are just ridiculous. They'll be like, oh, oh, hey, I'm sorry. Hey, check out my new blush. But also, here's a brand new TV that you don't need that you could buy yourself, but I'm going to give it to you instead. What? I'm sorry, but when I see this, I'm just like, this is literally one brand trying to outdo another, outdoing another. Well, they gave them $100 sunglasses, so now we need to give them a $200 jacket. Well, then we need to X, Y, Z. And before you know it, we're taking people to Hawaii. We're taking them to Japan. We're taking them all over the world. And then we're buying them things, and we're getting them TVs, and we're getting them custom-made this. We're buying them $1,000 sunglasses. Oh, wait. That's exactly where we are. Instead of just being like a world of, hey, I'm from, I'm from uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills. Would you mind checking out my powder? Here it is. I'm going to send it to you in a nice modestly wrapped box in its unit carton just so you can see what the average customer is going to get when they purchase this because i'm sorry yet again i think it does taint the review of the person depending on who it is not all influencers obviously would be guilty of this but i think that it could taint the review if you get this product like this powder was delivered to me in a ferrari that i got to keep yeah i'm gonna think this powder is really freaking fantastic you know what i mean like i think that there's obviously some level of like psychoanalyzing there that happens as well and for me i'm just looking at it as a consumer as a small influencer and I'm like how is it possible how do we go back how do we rewrite this so that way reviews are not purchased people are not purchased there's not any waste like the waste of it yes obviously like this is a package this is a container there's going to be waste here the lid the, uh, the bottom part of it like the container itself there is a level of waste that will happen no matter what in makeup but for me to look at this and say this waste compared to the waste of the box inside the box inside the you know big old cupcake inside the man that was wearing the pumple suit like i just I don't understand. You can't compare the level of waste that you have just with the product and its unicarton to the level of waste after all of the marketing and all of the X and the Y and the blah, blah, blah. It's just, oh my God, it's so much and it drives me insane. Another thing that drives me absolutely cuckoo freaking bananas, drama in the YouTube world, in the beauty world. Oh my God. Guys, do you honestly, like, I'm just... <sighs> real talk, real question. Do you realize... Do you realize, let me just, let me just get this together, that this whole James and Tati thing that happened, that was started over a gummy bear. Let that sink in. How in the hell are we living in this world when a feud that makes national news in the beauty world is started over a gummy bear sponsorship? Someone was paid to talk about the gummy bear. And it was like, or not even paid. Was they? Was he paid? I don't even care. I don't know if he was paid. My God, do not come for me. I do not care. I keep my nose out of all that because it doesn't matter. Oh my God. Like, how? How? Are you kidding me? And it's like, and I'm not even saying anything against like the, the James or the Tati or anybody. Because I just sit here and, and I, to me, like all the drama is the same. Whether it started with a gummy bear or like a, they dinged my car with their car keys or they did the, I just... I cannot care as a consumer, as a person that watches YouTube, all I kept thinking is, is this ever, ever going to end? Like, I know that a lot of it, even to be fair, like, I know I just kind of mocked it a little bit, but to be fair, uh, sometimes it has nothing really to do with the YouTubers. Yes, they can make it awful themselves. They make this video and then somebody else makes a video and then there's a response and then there's commentary. And before you know it, your video turns into like a bajillion other videos, okay? Not all of that is your fault. And I understand, like, there are the drama and the commentary, and again, they perpetuate this. What I really don't understand about all of this is, like, how do you come so far from wanting to be, like, and I'll just keep using, like, that situation because 
because it's the one that I use first. But like James, he was known for his artistry and for his talent and for being just like so insane. Because he's a talent. I don't care what you think of him as a human being. Boy, he is talented. There's a lot of talented people in this makeup world. But he's talented. And he was known for it. Like that is the artistry that he was known for. And just like with Tati, she was known for her reviews and for her um like makeup Mondays or madness makeup Mondays or whatever where she would go and tell you how to like get a good deal and, and where to shop and what products were worth paying high and which ones weren't like she, that's what she was known for was like value shopping and reviews and that sort of thing which is probably more so the lane that I fall under more so obviously than like the talented artistic side but how do you go so far from both of those two things to now all of a sudden like whoosh, you're just known for drama there are so many people that didn't even know that you people existed before this whole thing happened and now all of a sudden it's like oh that's all they're known for is like this review thing i know them for this one time that they ate a gummy bear like oh my god i just i don't understand and i do not again i understand that sometimes you don't have a say in like the direction that it goes because again it'll get picked up by a commentary or a this or a that channel and it'll just get ran with and those people have their own channels that they have to you know work with and do their things with so i understand that sometimes the perpetuating of it is not their fault and i get that but i just do not understand how this whole drama cycle happens constantly like how do we live in a world where people are not just happy for other people because those people got somewhere in their lives as a 30 year old person, that's how I see it. Granted, maybe I'm just a little too old for this whole situation. But like, I look at it and I'm like, you know what? I respect the hustle. I respect the fact that you got into it when you did. I respect X, Y, Z because there it's respectful to me like as somebody who now at my age is trying to get into this market and trying to like do her own thing. I can respect what you did because it's awesome. And I just like, I don't understand how it goes from being someone who has a craft or a niche to someone who has respect to, and how somehow it ends up in this huge wha-bam situation. And I don't care which one of the big hitters you are. I'm not trying to call out James or Tati or any of them, regardless of anything else. I just do not understand YouTube drama. And that's the, the beginning end of it. Like, I just, I don't get it. All right, beautiful people. I'm actually going to go ahead and stop right here. I had a couple things left on my list, but I am going to save those because I want to hear from you guys down below. Did you like this video? Do you think it was dumb? Are you like, girl, no more. I can't suffer through another one of these. What do you guys think? Because if you like these types of videos, I'll keep my list going. I always have like a running tally. Um, so I want to hear from you guys down below on that front. Do you like it? Do you not? Do you think it's worth doing another one? Do you think this should be a series? Like, what are your thoughts and opinions? Second thing I want to know from you is, do you have anything that annoys the absolute living crap out of you in this beauty world? Is there anything that you're like, Paige, Wow, this gets me going. And then if it's kind of sparked something in me, you never know. You might give me an item for my list. We might have something in common there. Or it might just be you. But I still, like, I want to know what annoys you. Because, I mean, seriously, like, what's better than knowing what annoys somebody else? Hello. I need to know. Of course, while you're down there leaving me all the comments about all the things, don't forget to check me out. I'm on Instagram and on Twitter. They are both linked in the description. Everything that I am wearing on my face will be affiliate linked down there as well. And if you have not done so yet, the most important of all is to subscribe and turn your post notifications to this here, a YouTube channel. Because I do upload five days a week. That's right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. You guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please do not forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, my hips hurt after making that video. I don't know what it is about that video, but I tell you what, my hips hurt right now. They hurt. The best part of waking up is folders in your car. What I really just can't get over about this chair that I sit in is it's like a leathery type chair. So it does like the, every time I move something, it does like that faux fart sound where it's like, no, I can't make it happen. Come on, faux fart. I don't think you guys could even hear it. But every time I try to move my foot, it sounds like a faux fart. And I'm just sitting over here where it's like, sounds like I'm constantly ripping some tootie and that ain't happening.